Oh, it was super exciting. I mean, you know, at the time, that's where I wanted to be. I mean, I had already done an internship there. I had seen the caliber of, you know, musicians and, and engineers that, you know, you were dealing with when you were in a place like that. And I was like, man, you know, school's great. And I'm, I'm, I still completely advise people to go to school for it. I mean, there's only so much you can learn on YouTube. So the school's beneficial. But what I always told students, and I mean, I even told them this when I was teaching, uh, was this is a base. You know, this is giving you all of the knowledge. This is giving you the tools to start with, but it's the experience that's actually going to craft what you do uh, or build your craft. And that was the excitement for me. It was just like, okay, this is going to be cool because now I've got, you know, a diploma, well, two diplomas in audio engineering. I know what's going on. So now it's just a matter of being a fly on the wall and watching these masters do what they do and basically just letting it all sink in. Do you remember how long it took to rise up kind of from assistant engineer to engineer to, you know, kind of being the lead on some of the bigger projects? Well, this is what was actually cool about Metalworks and another reason why I was really happy to work there. Um, I had also gotten an interview at a studio called Manta uh, downtown, which was one of the big studios at the time as well. Um, and Manta was very structured. I mean, they did a lot of corporate stuff as well. Um, so a lot of jingles and things like that for advertising. So they had a very corporate style structure. And the way that it worked there was that I would have had to spend two years in the dubbing room, which would have literally just been making duplicates of, you know, safeties of master copies, uh, you know, multiple copies of CDs back in the day when artists wanted references and backing up dats and all that kind of stuff. So I would have had two years of that, then four years to assist. That's like working I, in the mail room somewhere. Well, yeah, it was, it was almost kind of, it was almost unionized. You know what I mean? And you'd have four years as an assistant. And at that point, you were allowed to touch the patch bay, the tape machines. You did not even look at the console, right? That was the engineer's gig. Um, Metalworks, however, was awesome because Metalworks wasn't about how much time you had spent doing something. It's how quickly you picked up and how quickly you were able to get good at what you did. Um, so for me, I mean, to be honest with you, I'd already done a bit of an internship there. So I'd, I'd kind of, you know, well, the internship was more of a runner slash assistant to the assistant. But... Um, but once I actually got into the the assistant sheet, the second engineer uh, seat, sorry, I would say that within within the first year, I was already doing like you know just solo vocal recordings, very low key stuff, of course, just because I had to build up those chops. But within the first year, I was already engineering. That's that's a pretty quick timeline. Um, when you talked about being the runner for a bit, so people think you know being the runner where you have to go get coffee or get a sandwich or sweep or uh, you know, clean, clean, take out the garbage, clean the toilets, you know, people think that's, that's below them. But basically what's happening is when they give you an order uh, to pick up sandwiches, if you come back and the orders aren't right, they say, what are, you know, if you can't, if you can't get it right with the sandwiches, how are you going to get it right on these multi-million dollar recordings and, and projects, right? So it's, it's, you know, we, we think it's, it's below us, but it's, you know, people are actually paying attention to, they say how you do anything is how you do everything. No, you're right. And, and aside from that, the other thing too, that, you know, um, I would add to is the fact that a lot of people that are in the industry starting out, forget that it's a service industry. You know what I mean? And that's, I think one of the reasons that Noel did really well as well, aside from the fact that he's a talented guy, but he came from a service background. He worked in hotels. So having an understanding of the service industry is a big thing because I mean, these guys are paying top dollar to be in these studios. And when you're paying top dollar, you expect to be able to have a service behind a, a, to a company, um, you know, the time that you're actually behind the console or in the control room or even in the studio recording uh, to have those comforts so that you feel like, you know, you're in the zone and to keep you in the zone. Um, and that's kind of the runner's gig is to, to actually create that environment and to add that that extra little service that you know counts a hundred percent. You know, one of the things that blew me away um, when I was I was uh, I did a project out in Nashville a few years ago um, at Blackbird, and I mean Blackbird's I mean it's it's the holy grail of studios in North America, and it was just crazy. I mean, you walked in and it was very much that. You know, the guys were very personable uh, aside from the assistant, but even the staff up front. Um, everyone always had a smile on their faces. They were, they would bend over backwards to do anything for you. Um, and, you know, and at the time 
it's not like I was showing up with an artist that was a super famous artist. I mean, they treated us and, you know, I, it's not like they knew who I was either. I was, you know, new to them. I wasn't one of the big local American producers, um, but they didn't treat us any differently than they would have had it been, you know, Michael Jackson coming in with Quincy Jones, you know, um, that counted a lot. And I was just blown away by the fact that, you know, an unknown stranger comes in with an unknown artist and, and you're still treated exactly the same way as you would if you were super famous.